Two factors affect the throughput of a GT channel. The size of the fleet that a channel can transfer and the number of channel credits that the channel has available. These two factors are configurable. The size of the fleet affects the number of fleet elements that can be transferred in a single fleet. Therefore, it affects how much information can be transferred in one cycle. The number of channel credits affects how many transfers can be made in succession. Therefore, it affects the possible occupancy of the channel. A fleet is made up of a header and some payload where applicable. Header will have some routing information and an address or response depending on the channel. Payload will have data along with strobes. The header size depends on the read and write properties and the interconnect topology. One way of finding the header size for your topology is by running the performance tool and it lists out the header size on each channel. The payload is calculated as 32 bits per flip element. So if you have a 128 bit data payload, then the payload length would be four flip elements. A write request flit is made up of a header and some data payload, whereas a flit on the read request channel will just have the header. So the flit size on the read request channel can be narrower than the write request channel. Increasing the flit size increases two physical aspects of the NI tower components. The buffer space required to store flits and the number of wires needed to interface between the components and the channels. Therefore, increasing the flit size increases the area footprint. If the flits are too narrow, then a single transaction would be broken down to multiple flit transfers, hence multiple cycles. If the flits are too wide, then it increases the area. If it's too narrow, then it limits the bandwidth. The optimal flit size depends on both the throughput requirements and the area requirements of a design. Let's say we have a 128-bit data width interface. To transfer data at full bandwidth, the flit width would be four flit elements for the data, plus however long the header is. Channel credits. Inside the network, all the flit transfers are credited. This means to transfer one flit from one block to the next block, the transmitter needs one credit. So, as an implication of this, the number of credits on a channel determines the number of flits that a channel can store at the same time. To ensure back-to-back -back transfers on a channel, the number of channel credits must be enough to cover the round-trip delay between the two points. This would be the time the transmitter sends the flit to the time the transmitter receives the credit back from the receiver. In most cases, two credits provide full bandwidth. However, if there are retiming sizes on the channel, then the round trip delay on the channel increases. Therefore, you must increase the number of channel credits accordingly. Increasing the number of channel credits can also help reduce network congestion. This is due to the increased buffering space in the channel. The depth of the flit buffer is set by the number of credits, and the width is set by the flit width. The larger the number of channel credits, the more flit buffer entries are required. Therefore, the area footprint also increases. Now using this knowledge, let's try to optimize the configuration parameters in the tooling. To size the flits accurately, we need to know the header sizes. This can be found in the result statistics of the performance test case under the miscellaneous category.
The control DUWs indicate the header size for the flits in flit elements. So the header size for the read request channel is 3, the write request channel is also 3, read response channel is 1, and write response channel is also 1. So we can see that the header size for the other ASNIs are also the same. Using this information, we can set the flip bits for the channels in Canvas. To set the flit width and channel credits on the V and write request channels, we'll select the ASNI block and then click on ASNI channel parameters under the property editor. We know that the read request flit only carries the header. So setting the flit size to 3 would make sure that the entire read request can be sent in one flit. The write request flit carries 3 flit elements of header and 4 flit elements of data since it's coming from a 128-bit interface. So setting the flit size to 7 will ensure that the entire write request can be sent in one flit. Based on our traffic, we are not expecting back-to-back -back transfers. Therefore, we want to set the channel credits to 1 on read and write request channels. To set the flit width on the read and write response channels, we'll select the router and then click on the router channel parameters since that's where the response is coming from. Read response flit contains the header and the data, so we want the flit size to be 5 flit elements. The right response flit only carries the header, so we want to set it to one flit element. To set the channel credits on the read and write response channels, we select the connection between the two blocks and then click on the connection parameters. Since we are not expecting back-to-back -back transfers, we want to set these to 1. Flip size and channel credits can be modified on all the other channels in a similar fashion. In this case, Marcus C has already done a good job at configuring the flit size and channel credits to meet our performance goals. If you want extra performance in certain parts or save area, then you can manually modify the flit size and channel credits on those parts accordingly.